<laughs> oh. <clears throat> please, please, please. Um, you're, <laughs> you're making this even more weird. <laughs> so, 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 Blender Today Live. Some months ago, I had the great uh, invitation, great idea by Ton to make this uh, Blender Today Live show here on the Blender conference. But um, some of you may know it, some of you don't. Uh, who, everybody here? Raise your hand if you're actually seeing, you know what Blender Today Live is. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right, cool. So in a nutshell, it's a weekly meeting that we uh, do with a bunch of, uh, you know, like uh, people that are interested on the news, on the what's, what's new in the community, what's also what's new in the Blender development. We started this two years ago, and uh, we started talking about 2.79a. Like, hey, there is an A release. Um, so this actually started even before, a year before that, in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, so I'm, I work at the Blender studio for many years now. And uh, in the last few years, we were more uh, trying to make the, the communication about what's new in Blender. And you know, more, uh, you know, something more often, something more casual. So um, at some point, I, I was typing a, a tweet in English course, and now I, I, I didn't know how to say like something, you know, and uh, I tried to ask around in the studio. We were, back then uh, we were all sitting in the same room, so it was like, "Hey guys, how do I say that?" Whatever, and he's like, "Oh, we couldn't find how to say it." And then I realized it's like we are this this in this building. We're all speaking English, but really nobody is a native English speaker. <laughs> so why? <laughs> imagine imagine at home people like the, trying to read the news, what's new in Blender, and they couldn't even read it. So it's so like, okay, I speak Spanish, I'm gonna do it in Spanish. Then uh, people in English were go going to the comments, it's like, hey, what are you saying? You should write uh, the <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> what? So I ended up making it in English. And then it kept, kept growing, I was at home. That beer here is not just a, a coincidence and a, a nice gift from my boss, but actually I was doing it at home and uh, I, I was so late after work, like 11 p.m. on Mondays, Tuesdays, and I was like, I just want to get, you know, like just sit down with friends and talk like at a bar. So uh, that took us to over 80 episodes. It's been really <laughs> quite the... Is it really? Is it? Is there really so much to talk about Blender every week? And yes, actually, even daily. And sometimes uh, I even run out of time to to talk about all the new things. So here, really, it's the the credit is all for the developers and the community that keep making this amazing software. And I just try to put it in a natural in a, in a in one week, every week, almost every week. So. This actually Blender today came up from a um, from another project that we have together with Francesco, which is a, a, a community. It's also part of Blender Chat. It's a new uh, it's a new platform that we are using since a few years. We made it just to have a place in common that is open source and that uh, we can find to gather ourselves and talk about Blender stuff even more. So. After that, we even uh, we went further, and it's like, okay, Blender today is only for news, but what if you could have it for anything in other languages? Or a, a forum, a website, only for video sequence editor, or NPR rendering, non photorealistic rendering. So we made Blender community. So with, um, with Francesco, we, we kept this making, it's like, it's like a multiverse of uh, Blender news and updates. But it's all about with the with the community. This is the last one we we made. And Blender community is really it's about the community. Like it's about uh, about people. This is a phrase that I learned uh, by Ton it, when I first arrived at the Blender Institute in 2008. So 11 years ago, and we were we were chatting, and then we were having a beer, a drink at a windmill, very nice. And he mentioned, no, Blender is about people. And I was 21 back then. I was like, no, nah, what is that? Where's the people? What is, why people? It's software. I like it. the render button this big. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I like. But, you know, <laughs> and the anim button also this big. But uh, no, it's, it's actually about the people that makes it and that shares it and shares the passion. Because we're all here for 
a passion, really. So this brings me back to the, uh, to the why are we here, Blender Conference. It's 18 Blender Conferences. 18. The Blender Conference can't... <laughs> 18. The Blender Conference can drink legally, can uh, drive a car, right? <laughs> the Blender Conference is a grown-up, and Blender is even older, 25, 26 years already old. So in this uh, weekly show that we have, I always share what's new in Blender, what's, you know, what's, what's up with Blender. And I get to answer that. I go through all the emails and changes and the developers meeting notes, and I try to share what's new in Blender, and people ask me questions or ask the developers at the end of the show. So here, I was thinking, OK, we have a bunch of people, so let's turn around here, things a little bit, and do it the other way around. I'm going to ask you people, I have some guests here, and what's, what's new in Blender? Because Blender is so... All over, it's all over the place, really. Like, uh, if, you, if you ask a, a sculptor, a sculpting artist, then, uh, so how's the video sequence editor? So maybe he doesn't even, you know, doesn't even know that there is a video sequence editor. Or like, uh, like the other day I was showing, uh, I was uh, making some renders and stuff, and then I did a little bit compositing in the compositor, and the um, person next to me was like, what, what is that, is that Nuke? Uh, no, well, like a tiny little nuke, but it, it can do the thing. And I, and I added the video in Blender. And I, so there are so many uses for this software that we all love and no, mainly love <laughs> most of the time that I wanted to get some guests. So my first guest today, if I can see him here, would be um, an artist that I really, really um, admire. Came all the way from the US. Ian Hubert, are you around here? Yes, please. Thank you. Please. So, Ian, thank you for coming. It's going to be only five minutes. It's like a, like a doctor nice. visit, really. It's a am, <laughs> I, am I amplified? Huh? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, you are. So, great talk today. It was amazing. It oh, was thank really, you. I really was so stressed out. Uh, really? Oh, I was it wasn't just, the coffee yeah. then. It was just the stress. Oh, it was then. coffee too. Okay. <laughs> amazing. So, I would like to ask you this, basically. So the first question is, so what's new in Blender? Do you keep track of this for your work? Do you really uh, do you, do, you, do you follow the news? Do you do you happen to jump into Blender 2.8 immediately uh, while it was being uh, made, or did you wait for the for all the the pain to go away <laughs> from all the, <laughs> the changes? And uh, how was it for you? I want to 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 know because you've been using Blender. You directed uh, Tears of Steel, and before that, you've been using it for the amazing artwork that we've seen uh, before. So. Well, that, that was what brought me first watching watching the show was uh, the, the Blender 2.8 transition because like a lot of muscle memory um, yeah. has been built up over the past like you know 14 years and then suddenly a lot of that was completely gone and just the level of like stress I'd find like I'd know I'm like oh I have to start an animation and I'd get like my backward tense of like yeah. what it, what is it um, and so and I kept googling like all right so just where is this thing and then your face would show up like <laughs> hello I'm going to tell you it's like oh great um, and so yeah I had I definitely had kind of that that feeling of missing out for a while just because seeing all these amazing new new tools just just coming out um, so what was your feeling now like uh, after after the, the period of uh, panic? It, it, feel, it feels like we're using like a program borrowed from the the future <laughs> like I keep using it and I'm like oh I guess we can just like do like modeling and as you're modeling there's just shadows like being cast in real time on the ground or like refractions and like reflections reflecting what like you're still making like that seems That's absolutely insane. absolutely bonkers. It feels like uh, it feels a lot more like you're you're working with like real life objects than like like the that computer separation feels as if it's disappeared a yeah. lot. And that's do you, been. Really do you think cool. you're gonna change uh, your workflow based on this new stuff, or is just gonna keep on? I I think so. Being able yeah. to just so easily see what the final result is like as you're as you're working with it, I think is changing the way I think about assembling the scene. It's kind of like you're just again, it feels like you're in it a lot more than like, all right, I'm setting things up for the render. As you're working, you're kind of like seeing like I, I love working in, in yeah. Eevee as you're as you're going. Yeah. And then like I kind of use cycles for like the last, you know, ten percent type thing. Yeah. And there's sometimes I sit I hit render. And I kind of look at it. I'm like, I thought it would look just a little bit better than than this. And I realized it was a <laughs> Eevee render. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. 
which I think could be tweaked so it looks, yeah. you know, a lot of times indistinguishable from from cycles. But like, I don't I don't get into the the gritty stuff a lot. I just kind of check the boxes and set up the uh, irradiance volume. Yeah, the, yeah, those things. So, do you ever feel uh, find yourself like uh, just you know like wandering around? It's like one that you like you know the neighborhood. You know this blender, and then suddenly it's like oh, there is a grease pencil over there. The grease pencil hill. You know, it's like do you feel like uh, sometimes wandering over other areas in blender or? Oh, geez, should you even yeah. check that out? Or? Oh yeah. Um, oh, I'm so excited about the, gre the grease pencil. Like that's that's one of the things where like I see it just there and like opening it and it's like hey, do you want to like start a regular? 3D thing, or do you just want to do a 2D animation? Like every time I open Blender, <laughs> it's like, oh, maybe, maybe I do want to do a 2D animation. <laughs> um, so it's the asking. So you could ask you, like, hey, do you want to make a build a snowman? Every like, <laughs> like time like, you oh. open Blender, like, hey, have you considered just like uh, doing this whole other other thing? Yeah, or <laughs> like, like a you're talking <laughs> like a pop-up, like, pop like uh, every 10 minutes. Hey, there's this new feature. <laughs> <Every> hey, <laughs> 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 amazing. So. What else would you like? What else would you add to this uh, army? Do you think what, what what do you think is missing, and what do you think it's or it could be like a like change in order to to make your work uh, easier or more lazy actually? Yeah. Um, oh, geez. I'm, I've always been I've always been the worst at that. I was um, like I see the tool. And I'm like, oh, I'll just exist in that. And people are like, what do you wish it could do? And I'm like, I I've been using that <laughs> to define my workflow. I I don't know. Um, I mean, there's a couple specific things like um, so. Blender defined your workflow, and then yeah, wow, yeah. Um, and I actually, yeah, I'm just very quick to kind of exist in this. Like, all right, I've learned these tools. Let's just, and that's how I'm going to start thinking about every scene is is using those those tools. So, but, so how um, come? How's that? That's how the developers can uh, try to twist your workflow into other things. You oh know, yeah. it's like uh, put more grease pencil in your face. And uh, what's <laughs> what's crazy is that different things that I thought was like. Things are just becoming optimized now, like render times, just like with the same equipment. I'm used to like, we, we speed up the equipment and then we you know, ask just as much of the computer so the render times are always staying the same. But all these new things are like, oh, now the cycles just renders, you know, like <laughs> this many times fast again. Um, it's been- Ever means uh, Blender Internal? Blender what? Internal? Um, eternal, yes. not Blender Internal. I miss Blender Eternal. Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose. I mean, I haven't used it in in so in so long. I do. But uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know why exactly, but yes. <laughs> I remember fighting fighting originally just because it's like uh, for for lighting and texturing and all of that. There was so many so many hacks from like back in the '90s of like, oh, you want light to bounce? You have to put a, a light there where the sun hits so it can like cast and all of that. And so a then negative light to subtract oh, light. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it was like this whole whole skill set of like how how to make you know a blender internal that that old you know stuff work the best for like, um, and I thought that was the art. I was like, yeah, you figure out how to use the the art, and then cycles comes out, and it's like, yeah, we we just do it. We just light, you know, it's just real. It's like just real. <laughs> computer comes for free, you know, you get like, a bounce. What about our skill sets? It's all ah, and so I was yeah, even yeah. In like tears of steel for a lot of that, you know, I was like. So you so know. you see yourself your workflow like evolving uh, with the with the tool like. Um, do you think, or like the the more features get added, the more you learn? In my case, for example, I, it was like that. When I started, it was like, oh, there is this new feature. I guess I'm gonna learn it, and then you end up like learning different areas that I wouldn't even think yeah. I, I would learn. Yeah, there's. Um, I I almost have this feeling that it's like I I know there's tools, every, everything I do, I always know there's like a more efficient way to do it, or that somebody like anything I have to do more than a couple times. I'm like, this is driven someone crazy and there's yeah. a way to like optimize it um, and so I try to um, check every once in a while like especially once I get too much of that muscle memory of like doing a thing over yeah. and over it's like all right let's check check over to like um, blender artists do a search let's check the the blender market see if anybody's made like a little a little <laughs> add-on or, yeah. or something like that I've only recently gotten into the the add-ons and stuff of just like because I do it professionally it's a one-way so uh, like, ticket you know you start with one it's like oh maybe it's another for this it's, an, it's like an app the, for that and the justification too yeah. of just like well I mean it, it's it costs me time to to do stuff and so if something's going to save me a certain amount of, of time it's it's usually worth it to like buy a, a cool tool that like We'll just do that with like a like a click or something. Yeah, and it's um, supported and it's maintained and uh, it helps uh, people to make a business also out of yeah, it. So yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much. It was that already was short, but uh, thank you, thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, uh, so uh, shifting things around a little bit again, I want to invite my next. Uh, 
It's the first time he's going to be on the show with my next guest, Sergey Sharivan. Welcome. Hello. It's your first time. I finally got you. Yes. That's the first it time. That's right. It only took 80 episodes. Thank you. And we were like three, five meters apart. Three uh, meters. Three meters? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. I, this, uh, this week, actually, it's, uh, well, you heard it. It's about twisting things around. So I want to uh, ask what's new in Blender. So what what is like... Um, I guess you don't watch the much of the show. It's uh, you can hear me talking every week anyway, so that's why, of course, that's why. Well, some some actually do watch. Yeah. Have, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, the uh, so it goes about asking question: What's new in Blender? So, do yourself keep up with uh, all the Blender changes besides uh, code review and uh, um, the well, meeting notes and stuff? Well, the code review is not happening that much, and a lot of stuff happens outside of the code review anyway, but I try to keep up with the commit logs just to see where stuff is moving to be ready for something in a bug tracker or so. Yeah. It's like, hey, like uh, th this, tool, this tool is broken. It's like, do we even have this tool? <laughs> is this is even there. And do you ever find yourself like uh, with surprises about like, uh, oh, there is that tool I didn't remember about, and somebody made a patch for it there? Well, sometimes, yes. We, most of the time, it's more like you hear, hey, we want to have this feature, and, and, and then people like just talking about it as if it's there. It's like, why are you talking as if it's there? Because it is. It's <laughs> like, OK, miss that memo. That's insane. So you started, actually, uh, as a, an artist uh, like for Blender. You were uh, modeling, uh, right? Well, mainly, uh, mainly I, I was just a hobbyist around just because my daily job was some coding, so thought to have some hobby on the side just to draw something. <laughs> and then at some point, I had this crazy idea, like, let's model DeLorean, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, uh, this tool is missing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, maybe I should write it. <laughs> mis mis mistake of a life, yeah, let's just write it. And then ever since then, just Blender development. And uh, just a few moments later, uh, I, yeah. made a, I, I made the motion tracker, a yeah, new it's editor. It's, it's, it's like, it's like you, you, you kind of bring that. It's like, yeah, it brings it from first patch to motion tracking, yeah. And then they saw some Tears of Steel project. It's crazy. So you, it's, it, it's a motion, why motion tracker? Is it like uh, your, your passion, or you were really interested in it, or just because we were uh, missing one? <laughs> The, the, the motion tracking is mainly about, uh, like, underneath, it's all about uh, mathematical statistics, probabilities, and stuff like this. And that's what was my background uh, during university was, and having it in the computer with the code, with the computer vision. Sound, yeah, sounds interesting. Let's dig into this. Oh, so cycle stuff also. You've been doing a lot of cycle stuff and dependency graph, if, uh, if yeah, you it's want it's some math. <laughs> yes. So which one is the one you like the most uh, out of this, all of the topics that you have touched in Blender? I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's like hard to say. It's, it, it's like, what's your favorite breakfast? It's like, well, this week, it's like I've enjoyed this year, but then it gets boring. So it's, it's, it's very nice to be able to, to, to work on different areas because at some point you also realize, well, I don't really have ideas how to solve this problem and being able to switch to another area which you like. The, the, that helps a lot. The, then you saw, saw, saw some stuff there, and then you come back while you remember, hey, I got an idea there. So I cannot say, I cannot prioritize one over another. It's, it's no, like a favorite. Like if you had a whole uh, week of just holidays, uh, just like coding holidays. Like well, at, at, at this point, I have so many ideas about how what to do in the motion tracking and, and uh, masking tools and stuff like this. Masking tools. Right? Masking tools. They, they were done for the Tears of Steel, and ever since then, they were not really pushed forward just because there were other things to do. So 2011, 12, yes? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Wow, well, I'm pretty excited to hear about that, though. Um, but in the future, like something that it doesn't even exist, have you ever thought about uh, including something that is not even related to CG, but maybe like it could fit? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, that's a very good question. Like... Uh, Oh, yeah, sure, oh. circuit board designer. So, 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 so getting to a circuit board designer, actually get the, the 
to the level where the physics simulation, and then what happens is you model the battery and the model your resistor, you put it across the battery, and then poof, and magic smoke escapes. It's like awesome, ah, right? Ah. <laughs> Beautiful. So a smoke simulator in uh, like a secondary. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. So um, you are one of the, 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 the key um, coders in, in, in Blender in general. So what would you give to a, uh, someone that wants to, what, what kind of advice would you give to someone that wants to start and, in, and is maybe starting with a little few, a few patches? Is it like a find your area and fall in love with it or like a look around until you find your true love? in the code. <laughs> well, first of all, don't, d d d don't be afraid of code. Blender is not that complex, and just like look around, and then just try different uh, areas, and just to get a feel like what your actual passion is. And then once you found this, the greatest way to learn stuff is look into, like a lot of stuff I learned is from fixing the bugs from the backtrack, and by, by looking into those issues, you learn a lot about how that specific area is working. So, it's not only about let's implement some awesome feature or sometimes you, you, you don't even know how to do it just because you don't know knowledge yet. By going in that area, seeing what's happening behind the scenes, how, how to fix bugs, that's, that's a very great opportunity to learn. And then uh, very first patch which you're going to submit will probably ask, hey, yeah, you're, like, you know, you, you, you're not following code style or some other boring stuff. And oh, yeah. it's like, oh, man. <laughs> Don't like, like don't, be down do, 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 don't let yourself be down by this. It's like y y yes, just like there's the things because that helps a lot of Blender as a uh, as a project to be sustainable for the many many years. Yeah, that's a very nice advice. You're asking, uh, you're giving a good advice, and like, hey, fix our bugs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, but it's a. I think it's a really good good way to to get familiar with the code and see all the, yeah, exactly, the mistakes. Yeah. Is there easy like uh, like um, how to call it like? Um, we, 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 we we have a project tags in the in the bug or task tracker which says e e e easy first task something like this. Quick hacks. Quick hacks. Yes, Quick exactly. Hacks. So just look what's there. And what you can also do, you can also okay. So just like look around if you see something. Yeah, let's mark it as an easy hack or so. Yeah. Awesome. And just do it. Thank you very much. Uh, it I had a great time. You're very much welcome. Thank you. You need to hug. You can leave it there. Thank you, man. Ah. Wow. Such a privilege to have him here. And to have all the developers here. There are developers that are like relatively new to the to the to the community that are only in a few years and now they are doing amazing things. We have uh, we, yeah, we have Antonio Vasquez working on, a, on, for example, on Grease Pencil that in the last few years. We have Pablo Lavarro somewhere here, I, I guess. Can you raise your hand somewhere if you're there? <laughs> there. That out of nowhere appeared and, and made the sculpting tools amazing. So they, we have Richard working on the video sequence editor, and we have Nathan now also working on the sequence editor. That's insane, though. I'm really happy about having and giving the developers a, a room to talk and to, a place to you know, express themselves. Our next guest is completely unrelated to development. I think it's more of the CAD area, which is also a very important area of Blender. And let's see how that is doing. So our guest, next guest, Daphne, please. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, it's nice to see you. <laughs> please, come. Hello, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. First conference, second, three? Uh, last year I went for one day. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. So last year I went here for one day just to see how it was, and then I was really excited, so I think, okay, now I have to go to a full uh, conference. So it worked out. So it's <laughs> like one day just to try, and then <laughs> maybe I'm not really convinced <laughs> of these crazy people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what made you come back? What, what do you think about you? Uh, it's really inspirational. It's really like if a lot of ideas from, oh, I should check that out, check that out. Uh, to be honest, I didn't always check it out, but 
<laughs> it's really more thing to learn more. To learn more. I, I often find myself like not even going to the talks that much and just hanging out at the <laughs> cafe with other people. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we all share that. Mm -hmm. And in the previous place that uh, it was much smaller, uh, mm -hmm. there was this thing about, uh, yeah, the, the cafe was always packed mm -hmm. and the talks were sometimes, you know, like uh, uh, missing people from here, from here. And it was uh, such a nice, mm -hmm. such a nice vibe. So, yeah. Uh, so that's what made you come back to the Blender conference. What, what made, you, made you even look into Blender for CAD, which <laughs> is an area that is, uh, is missing some policy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, my background is in industrial design engineering. So what I learned at university was uh, CAD, so, uh, so it works in my case. And uh, I always liked to design jewelry for 3D printing. That was a hobby for me since well, I was a student in 2011. And uh, if you ever design something more organic and you try to make like jewelry that's really made with flowers and stuff and you open salt works, it's not the best tool. It's, it's, it's the, <laughs> the worst tool you can pick besides just uh, yeah, drawing it. Um, so over the years, I tried a lot of free tools. Of course, when you uh, stop being a student, your salt, li salt works license uh, expires as well. And uh, I was also told, yeah, Blender is free. You should try it. And then... I tried and it was so different. So n your way of thinking is completely different. Actually, I had it three times. I, I, I tried it, installed it once, nah, not working. Yeah. A few years later, I tried it again, had it on my computer for years. And it was only, yeah, Blender Guru, when he had his donut uh, tutorials. Nice. <laughs> That's Guru. when I start, finally, yes. start doing it. And, uh, so yeah. From donuts <laughs> to jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was maybe also interested in more things, uh, more rendering of jewelry, more images. And uh, at my work at the time uh, at Shapeways, I was giving workshops to people like, how can you 3D print? Well, to 3D print, you need a model, right? Yeah. And I tried a lot of different tools because I uh, educated children, but also grown ups, uh, engineers. So I tried a lot of things. And Blender was the one that really was like, okay, it can do everything. And that's really nice. Ah, so actually, the fact that it's not a it's just a CAD mm -hmm. or like a more like precision modeling, mm -hmm. but it has everything else. That's a very yeah. that's a very very interesting thing. You have a presentation, by the way, uh, tomorrow. I yeah, think? tomorrow yes. at uh, half past three, and then I will talk about the differences and how they work together. Because at my work, uh, I have to use SolidWorks sometimes, but they also use Blender. So tomorrow we'll talk about well, how can they work together? Because they can. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. So what do you th uh, so what? When we ask, so what's new in Blender? Mm -hmm. So what for for you? What is the most uh, that that you look after? Like you look forward to? Well, what I really liked about uh, 2.8 is the interface change because it's easier to learn, yeah. which also makes it easier to teach. Ah. Because uh, I think that Blender has added value within the company I work. So I try to uh, convince my coworkers to also learn it, <laughs> and then if it's easier, then because they all also often tried it already, and we're like. Oh, but it's so hard. Or yeah, I tried it once. But no, it's new. It's better. <laughs> Try it. It's shiny. <laughs> yeah, I had that feeling many times from two, uh, two point. I started with Blender 2.23, mm -hmm. and also started, close it. No, it's impossible. And then I that didn't have internet, so it was okay, that or nothing. So it was like okay, so <laughs> <laughs> keep trying. And then the the facelift, we mm -hmm. uh, we got on 2.4, and then 2.5, and mm -hmm. uh, 2.8. Now I think mm -hmm. that one is the one that is. Pushing more, but why would you like to see something that it's uh, like uh, you you expect or like like you just want the tools that we have like now better? Is there something completely different than you? It's not like I have a wish list or something. Uh, what I sometimes miss for is I'm a really messy modeler because for 3D printing I, it doesn't have the the mesh can be as ugly as possible. Yeah. So I just stuff it in and I add things and I. Yeah. So it's not like I'm missing a lot of things because I just make it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's more for me around it because every time I know that I'm not doing things the quickest or the best way. Like I just want to know, oh, there's so many tools and I just don't know them all. So I just need a way to find more to learn all, all those tools. That's, that's my biggest challenge, I think. That's the biggest challenge. But sometimes by looking just for those like way, different ways of doing the, the same thing is like you... You find and you find yourself with different uh, ideas. Like for re recently, somebody asked me, "So, is, does Cycle have a position pass? You know, when you render the, the passes and position pass?" You're like, uh, "No, but <laughs> but you can use a, a, an override material and put the position into the mission color, and in line you get a position pass." But yeah, it wasn't really uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't really elegant. But hey, we can have one. And I think with those uh, workarounds, we ended up we end up learning. 
uh, much more. It's not a, a lazy way to say, no, no, we're not going to fix it, but uh, I think that's, uh, that's a great value to, to have. To learn, look around, press all the buttons, yeah. and uh, yeah, can make the best out of it. Mm -hmm. So we're in, I'm looking forward to your talk tomorrow again. When? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, to your talk tomorrow. Yeah, it's a half past three. Half past three. Get okay, versus here? Blender. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, see you then there. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> awkward. I like to have. But my last. I'm scanning. I'm scanning, because I've seen him on Twitter, but. Over there, yes, my next guest also comes all the way from America just for this show. Like, what? What? Really? No, he, he just learned this uh, morning and he was coming. I'm pretty excited uh, to have Alan. Please come. I was actually. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Music at all? No, well, uh, I, I could say, ah, no, yeah, no, I should. Have too, late, too late, too yeah. late. Yeah. Oh, the moment is gone. Okay, so. Can I, can I just say right off the bat that every time I watch Blender today, I get a little scared that, like, some kind of talent scout or agent or producer is going to just see that and, like, snap you up <laughs> and you're going to get a night talk show or something and <laughs> you're not going to do this anymore. And I just, want, I just want you to promise in front of everybody here that that's not going to happen. Can we have that in like verbal signature? Th that's not going to happen. Okay, good. I promise. I promise. It's good, good, good. But if it happens, it's going to happen at the, at the studio, at the Blender studio. Oh, well, there you go. That's, another, that's a positive way to look at it. Yeah. You're going to lift us all up <laughs> with your talent. Thank you. So, uh, uh, if, if you don't know Alan, he is a friend of a, uh, a famous person called uh, Captain Dissolution. Yeah, um, I work for him for yeah. free most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I loved your talk last year. It's amazing. Thank you. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Thank you very much. That's amazing. So, uh, you said you watch, you actually watch the show. So you keep up up to yeah. date. Why do you even uh, keep up to date? Do you think it's well? I mean, I. You, it's hard to miss because if you're looking for Blender stuff, <laughs> your face, like, like Ian said, your face is going to show up, and it, it's very engaging. Like you, you know, the fact that it's a live show, I don't often get to catch it live, you know, schedule-wise, but because they're all available online, um, you just talk about these things in such an engaging way that I'm not a developer, I don't understand a lot of the stuff, like the ins and outs, but you make it very accessible with the mind of like, how is this important to an average user and to artists and stuff, so I don't know. I, I can't help but watch <laughs> the, the, the episodes. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you very much. Is there any anything that in, uh, like for example, that you wait, f like you're looking forward for the, for, the, for the news in particular, for an area that you're using the most, I guess, also motion tracking, all that VFX uh, pipeline, or just yeah. in general, just the... Yeah, I was, I mean, from the few talks I've heard today and from talking to people, I, I'm really excited about like, I know we always talk about Blender being like an all-in-one tool, but I don't know if a lot of, like, I don't know what the ratio of artists is that use it that way. I know I, you know, it's one of the things I use, and I try to, like, always think about what can I do in Blender without leaving, but, but some of the things, like the tangent talk today, got me really excited about, like, what if I could keep it all in there from, anim from storyboard to the final, final product? And I guess, I yeah, I would want to see improvements, like, in the video sequence editor making, like I don't think it requires like making it the best, like on par with other editing tools like Avid or something, but it's about like what, which things, which basic things are important. Like I'd like to be able to play in real time and just have shortcuts for uh, playing at different speeds and just do simple trimming tools so that I can just, you know, I don't need a lot of tracks, I just need it to have like the versatility to just yeah. cut things together and feel the pacing. And yeah, everything like that. What, what brought you first to, to Blender? I guess it wasn't the sequence editor. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess my, my talk kind of covered it in like an exaggerated way. But yeah, I, I used other software before. Then it's like many people's story. You use other software, maybe as a student or as an employee somewhere, or you, you own it, but then it gets old and you just can't afford to upgrade it anymore because the newer version is that much more expensive and you've waited too long or whatever. And I just... I got tired of worrying about that. And some of the, let's face it, some of the commercial 
software is not even really developed that rapidly, like with 3D packages. So like you, you, you keep paying, but you don't get a lot of bang for your a buck. Lot, Whereas this is like, I can't keep up. I can't, like <laughs> I had to, I have to relearn Blender every so often because so many features, you know, get uh, added to me, in. you know. So yeah. yeah, I think I, I see that as a, as a one of the, the the key things in Blender today is that uh, we have the lack to be able to talk about everything that's new as soon as it is new. Sometimes there is a commit and I compile and boom, the <laughs> show is live. Yeah. And and it's like yeah, this thing was like ten minutes ago, and yeah. uh, that that's a luxury I guess for that other companies cannot have. That's true. So it's good to you know to. Yeah, I hear that all the time. You mention it all the time, um, and I feel like I should do better because I'm not like, like, I don't want to say I'm antisocial, but like I'm, <laughs> I'm like, it takes a lot for me to like reach out and like say something like report a bug or, or ask for a feature, but I want to be better at that. And I think everyone should, you know, like this, it's about the communication. It's about, we, can, we can't call it a community unless people are always like pitching in and, and, and letting you know what, what they want. But do you so have any experience, or do you have any experience with other open source software? Is this like your first encounter? No, it's kind of my first, and it's, <laughs> so it feels very special. <laughs> um, but it makes me think, like, well, there's other tools I use that clearly have like popular open source versions or equivalents. And that's making me think about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, does it make I mean, you like want to help out in other open source projects as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, like I said, I, I don't know how I can help other than use the software and say, hey, the thing I did, the, the cool thing that got a lot of views, I actually used Blender or whatever. Like, that's the only way I can help. Um, so yeah, maybe I should do support other, um, like, other open, so software, op open source software projects well, in the same way. You are already doing it. Like, <laughs> when I was watching C Captain Dissolution, uh, uh, a long time ago, and then suddenly I see that that's a 3D cursor. You know, that's yeah. the ugly 3D cursor I know, and yeah. I saw it, and it's like he's using Blender. Yeah, I was shy about it. Like I, I was using it and creating visuals for it before I really got all vocal about the fact that I use it because yeah. I didn't even, you know, <laughs> I was like still getting like to know it and like, do I like this? Do and then eventually I did. I had the same thing as most people where I tried it and then I threw it away and then like it took a couple of years before I came back to it because it just felt like it was calling to me and I got through that <laughs> that hump of learning the the basics. Did you suddenly get like a thousand uh, uh, Blender people in the comments <laughs> like like hey that's um, the three of the courses that's it. Uh, yeah I don't remember I'm, I must have I, I don't I try not to read YouTube comments anymore which if you have run any kind of channel you 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 know what I'm saying <laughs> you know eventually <laughs> it's like it becomes background noise but um yeah, I'm s I'm sure Blender, the Blender army, showed up for <laughs> for any <laughs> mention of Blender. Awesome. Well, that's great to have you now in the in the Blender army in one way. You came back. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, that's I, you know, my presentation was so nerve wracking because yeah, I'd never been to a Blender conference. I came to like pretend like I know what I'm talking about as the first talk and make a lot of noise, and I spilled all my guts about anything related to Blender because I felt like I needed you know, it to feel like I belong here. <laughs> Blending. So I kind of <laughs> tapped myself out. I didn't, there's nothing else I could add for, for like another talk or something. So, But I, I really wanted to come um, and just experience this as like just an attendee and enjoy and meet people. So I'm having a good time now. Awesome. No well, stress. <laughs> hope to see you again next year. Yep. Thank you for <laughs> dropping by. Thank you. Anna, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh well, so we've seen uh, from uh, somebody rather like new to the community, someone that has been around for years, uh, developers, uh, someone that has been like forever, like Ian, and I was thinking uh, as to close this to, uh, to have someone from, like, from Blender, but a completely different area of Blender, which also uh, Blender is something completely different but it, it started as one thing and ended up as another thing. And uh, I'm super happy to have here my friend, Francesco Citi. Hello, Francesco. Hello. 
I Thank you for having me. That's totally unexpected. Totally unexpected. You were not expecting it. Okay. So uh, for when I was thinking about the guests, I was uh, I wanted to have some people that don't really uh, that I get not to see every day. And you actually I see you every day. But the the, the reason why I want you to be here, it's because um, you uh, are of like all these people really know uh, all the areas from Lender because you started using Lender by yourself, then you uh, were part of the Tears of Steel as an animation, and then ended up doing a track for the, for the production, and then now you're a full-on production uh, scene. You, you produced the uh, Caminandes films, you worked on uh, Cosmos Laundromat again, I guess the second part is also going to have you around, Maybe. as more in the producing uh, uh, part, so, um, and you, you've seen all the areas. So, what's new in Blender? <laughs> So what's Blender for you mainly? Because Blender means many things. What's Blender for you? You know, like for me, it was very interesting. Even just this talk, as we were discussing it, um, just uh, how to um, have Blender is like an, an infinite resource of uh, uh, things that are happening, things that are happening in the community, things that are happening at the studio, and uh, we have like indeed there is just so much going on that is like being in a candy store. You can just try. You can do. You can do anything because there is space for a lot of experimentation. And uh, things that are new are um, Blender itself is changing a lot, Blender the software, uh, Blender as a, as a team, as a company, as a group of people that are working together to make things happen. It has, it has changed so much, right? Like you were giving the little story of my life of how I started <laughs> as a, like really like using Blender. Now uh, I use Blender as a, uh, it's kind of like a utility, like, Sometimes I have to do something, and I even happen to use Blender, but I open it and then I realize that I didn't update it for a month or so. <laughs> and during the, uh, especially during the early 2.8 development, uh, I, would, I would do something, oh, I need to open this, and then maybe you would come by, and you would be looking over my shoulder, and you'd be like, ew, what is that thing? It's, <laughs> it's the so older old. version of Blender. Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on. So then you have to update it and everything. And, um, and you know, I... I see that uh, developing and going in, in, a, in a great place, uh, but especially for me, as you were starting to say early, is, is the people, like uh, how more mature uh, the community feels, how uh, committed the people are, and how that commitment keeps growing and people keep stepping up. Um, this is only the first day of the conference, but I'm already so proud to see how it has turned out and like that, you know, the people are here and that it's more people than ever and everybody seems to enjoy themselves. So that for me is like, it's not that it's something new, but it's like to keep the, to see that it keeps renewing itself. And where do you see it in the future? What's the direction do you think uh, uh, Blender is going? I think like there are many, like there are a few companies, there are a few organizations and uh, projects that are built around an open source core like Blender is. And I think that Blender is getting in a place where I find it harder and harder to compare it to others because of the way because of the philosophy of how the project is run and uh, to really keep it grounded, to keep it real. Uh, even now, after you know the talk from Tom, the growth and seeing how much more responsibility you can get, but also how much more opportunity you can get by getting that support, that still we do it. Like we, we be like, okay, we are hands-on. That approach I really like, and I think, and I hope that that keeps, uh, uh, it keeps being like that. And I think that that's the best thing of Blender. That's the best thing of Blender, different use, the, the, the involved, uh, Community being involved, companies getting involved, but uh, from the distance or contributing patches for it, it's really it's it's a whole new uncharted territory for for all of us. Uh, do you, so for for the um, coming fu fu future, Cosmos Laundromat too. Do you think is that gonna make a? How would you how would you see it as a project? Do you think it's gonna change much from it from it? Is uh, Spring was our last project? What do you think? Uh, like, f from a production standpoint, of course, we want to try a lot of things, like uh, a lot of things that in the past, especially while we were doing Spring, there is always things that you can improve. So we have a long list of things that hopefully we will address. We keep addressing them over the course of the movies. And uh, now that we have more resources and are more established, I think it's going to work. Uh, it's going to work out better. Um, but I think... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Cosmos because people already know a little bit the title and they have seen it, even if it's like a hardcore, smaller audience than for other more mainstream projects that we did. But it's still like, 
I, I think it's a great opportunity to just uh, be able to continue telling that story and, uh, and see where that goes, and especially uh, with the Blender Cloud, because when we started the Blender Cloud, the, nothing, and there was nothing, right? The uh, Cosmos didn't exist. So it's thanks to that project that actually all this built up, and so I think it's fantastic to be able to continue that and see where that goes and leverage the cloud more. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, especially excited because you've been part of the Gooseberry project, which was a code name for Goose Cosmos Laundromat. Since the very, very beginning, you built the Blender Cloud for it. You uh, had this lunch uh, <laughs> this at, the, um, at South, the South by, by Southwest, Southwest in uh, it, uh, in Austin. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty excited about what's what's to come. Do you think the future is it like it's completely Blender centered? You you also talk about the Blender Cloud. The, um, that it's also an open source, not a lot of people know it, but the Blender, uh, cloud, Blender cloud source and attract the tracking software and the, the render management is all open source tools that we build around the Blender, uh, the Blender pipeline. Yeah. So, I mean, I see uh, at the studio where we work, like 99% of people use completely fully open source pipeline. We really try hard, we try really hard. I have uh, almost daily conversations with Tom about how hard we try and how worth it is. Um, and I, I really believe in the mission and I really believe in the goal of doing that. I think uh, from an ethical standpoint, it's really the right thing to do, like there is no doubt. And that the difficulty of finding the right balance between the effort that it takes to do that and the results that you get is really tricky to get because like staying true to yourself and through the mission, it's like, of course, it's priceless. Like you can really walk on a stage with a clean conscience and say, that's what they're doing, we live by this. Um, so it's really uh, admirable, and I think that you know we should just keep doing that, even if it costs uh, if, it, if it costs a lot. But uh, we, we really gotta you know be uh, pushing it to make it better, and not just accept how some things are. Otherwise, we get stuck. Yes, and the way we make films can be shared with other people, so they can make the same uh, the same uh, films or their own films using the same tools that we are using at home in an open source way. So pretty happy and excited to see that coming up. Uh, no dates announced there is yet. No timeline. We will write a blog post. Uh, we will we will write all the announcements There's after. There's no dates the, yet. Yeah. Uh, it's only hype. So let's keep the hype going. Pure hype. <laughs> thank you very much for. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you everybody. Thank you. And thank you. you wrap it up? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Francesco, for coming here. He's, he's like the, it's been walking around, running around in the last few <laughs> Blender conferences. So if everything is working out, it's mainly thanks to him. So I'm pretty happy that he had some time to actually come and sit down and talk about this exciting future that is not only Blender, but it's uh, the, the, the whole pipeline around it, the rendering part, the production, the everything, all this effort that is going on at the Blender Institute to make to, to habilitate people, to give them the chance to uh, make their own films, their own productions using completely open source software from the one from the storyboards to the layout, to animation, rendering, texturing, sculpting now properly, and uh, finish up with, uh, yeah, with cycles or EV rendering in real time. So pretty exciting times ahead. I think it's about time we close this and uh, we go over what are the plans afterwards. We're gonna go have a hangout at the at the at the cafe. It's the last day. There's three, two more days to to go. So I hope you have fun. Thank you for staying here until the end. And uh, I'm gonna play some music now. I think I'm gonna leave uh, with some style. I, I hope <laughs> they don't put the video down. So thanks everybody. I'm gonna see you again next week. Say not same place, same place, almost the same time. Thank you. Uh, is it? No. Music is playing. We can, we can. Hey.